today, President Obama, you talked about it, Scotty, taking a victory lap, if you will, and putting his really his best spin, if you will, on the June's, June jobs numbers. This one particular part I want you to hear. This morning, we learned that our businesses created another 223,000 jobs last month. The unemployment rate's now down to 5.3 percent. Keep in mind, when I came into office, it was hovering around 10 percent. First of all, did you see the faces on the people behind them? <laughs> that wasn't the most enthusiastic crowd in the world. They got to bring bigger clock sounds next time because a couple of those people are like, hey, Mr. President, I was one of those 432,000 that dropped out, right? So not so fast, President Obama. In fact, just ahead of this weekend, this 4th of July weekend, we really have to be concerned about why, why so many Americans, especially young adults, have given up on the nation. I mean, because how else do we explain 432,000 people in a single month saying, you know, I'm going to sit it out. I don't want to deal with the labor force. I'm going to chill out on the nearest sofa. That's why, Mr. President, the participation rate is so low. But it's not a sign of success. It's a sign of defeat, Scotty. Well, you know, this is just a continuation, honestly, of the best week ever for President Obama. On the surface, yes, it might look bad to him. But he's celebrating. He is accomplishing. These numbers confirm he is accomplishing what he promised. This is what wealth redistribution well, looks like. That, that half the country could chill out while the other wealth half Wealth redistribution was always his big thing. And, yes, they're bad for us. But the truth is, this is more people on the government. Government teeth. These are more entitlements, more people that are actually enslaved to the government. This is winning in President Obama's book. I Maybe not say, the rest I of say us. that term before and I said it wrong once and I had to bleep it later. But it, <laughs> uh, it is, though. Let's face it. Uh, and, and, and yet, you know, he, he's making these tours. He's taking these, these bows. And everything, I think, for the next year and a half that's going to be revolving around jobs, Shah, I, I feel it's going to backfire if, if it works in any way at all. He's, he's taking victory lap after victory lap. And this, to me, is pretty much a, a headless administration leaving, leading a, a horseless recovery. There's nothing to it. And he wants to take victory lap after victory lap. To me, when I, every time I hear this president speak, it's the rhetoric of failure. That's all he's talking about. That's all I hear. You make a great point, Scott, but I think it will backfire when it comes to the election because if you're at home, <clears throat> either you're at a job, your neighbor's at a job, your cousin's at a job, we all know somebody have a job. Regardless of how good the numbers are, regardless of victory laps, I think this eventually will backfire for but the But even you just pointed out when they're, why are they cheering? Because yeah. the uninformed electorate think those are good numbers. They don't Although know them before. Although a lot of people weren't. I'm telling you, I was looking at that crowd, and there were a lot of people I think were in no dose or something. They didn't yeah, smoke good. And really like they were smoking weed or something before They weren't thing. paid they, enough to sit there. Yeah. And the message really, it, it's, it's so frustrating to hear him say that it's lower because when he took office, the labor participation rate was up like at 68%. We had more people working, participating in the workforce. Yeah. So it's, and, it's like smoke and mirrors. It and really I got to tell you, we say, okay, it's near a 38 year low which suggests that, you know, at the time we were going through a difficult period. Back then it was a record, guys. We were going into the job markets in the 1970s. People were going, you had women entering the job market, you had more people. It was actually in a higher trajectory. I don't know if there's ever a time in history outside of the Great Depression where we could even uh, uh, match this with Hillary. The way we've come down, to, to, to Joni's point, the only time that it's come down this precipitously was back then. Yet you think maybe still something is going on beneath the surface and Boom. We'll, we'll, those big numbers we've been looking for, sensing right around the corner. Well, we all see that, that maybe, you know, the next month and the next month, but it could also be that the data is just so manipulated. And next month we're going to be sitting here and saying, so they, oh, you know, so, no, oh, so there were if jobs they, If this was a, uh, a manipulated number by the administration, the real number was what, 10,000? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been manipulated all the way along. And I think what finally came out today, and everyone admitted it and said it, except for President Obama, is that people aren't working. But there's also a demographic aspect to it, right? You have all the baby boomers that are retired or they had their own businesses and now their businesses haven't, have not worked, they haven't been able to come back in. And then you have all of the millennials that are able to culturally live on their parents' sofa, live in the basement. So you combine all of that together and it doesn't make sense for everyone who's used to having... Well, that's troublesome. The, that, that is really that that troublesome. Is the, that is the picture, but it can all change around. We are having an election. I don't We're know how it magically changes around. I don't disagree that it can't, that it, I know it can change and I think a lot of people who give up and tweet me and say, I, I've given up we can't turn this country around i think they're wrong but i don't think it will turn around uh, under the president and i for my best hope is that we will chug along that you know what we've learned how to celebrate mediocrity particularly on wall street yeah. we've put on the pom-poms and you know i found myself saying today if 270 was a uh, would be a strong number obviously in the grand scheme of things it wouldn't be considering our population and the recoveries we've had in the past so 
I, does anyone think that we, we can do anything better under the current rules and the current policies? Because I think the best we'll get is the 223,000. I think if we're going to celebrate, if we're, this will be it. We don't, we don't have any reason to celebrate. We don't have any reason to be optimistic, very tragically, because there's nothing afoot that's going to actually change what we've... But this can like it change? To, can we go on like this for another year and a half and then maybe, to Hillary's point, start to make that turn? Absolutely. We need a new administration for sure. We need a new Congress, a new administration, and we need to make changes. We'll be on the, the bottom first, up. The first one you do to create jobs. Well, you know what I would do is to get rid of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Number one. No, fiscal policy. There is, yeah. no, there is no fiscal policy. Congress hasn't led. The, the administration hasn't led. We need to change the fiscal policy. We need to change the tax policies in this country. There are a lot of fundamental things we can do to change the ship. We need to reinvigorate the animal spirits. This is America. Just give confidence. It can be done. I mean, you could do all these things. We got all have great ideas. We lost confidence in ourselves and our country yes. administration. Get that yes. confidence back. Yeah. I'm not sure how you Absolutely. do it. And then that will lead us. Right. Morning in yes. America, Ronald Reagan made everybody believe it. Once they believed it, it happened. Right. Uh, and you how speak many... to business leaders all the time. What are they telling you? Well, what's interesting is that everyone I speak with, whether they're hiring managers, heads of talent acquisition, CEOs of companies, they all are talking about hiring. They want really great talent. And they're having a challenge finding the skilled talent. That still exists. Right. So there is a challenge there. There's opportunity there. I think there's still some cautiousness in the job market. And there's still a little bit of wait and see what's going to happen. All right, guys.